I do also want to take this opportunity once again to very visually thank the people at Plant Life Cactus and the um, Encyclopedia of Living Forms and Cactus Art Biz and a couple of other sites which I've mentioned, not least of which is Wikipedia, for so generously allowing the information that they have allowed to be shown to the public. Because there was a time in history when if you bought a cactus and it had a label on it, you were pretty much stuck. Unless that plant was then seen by a very experienced grower who could correct the mislabeling or the misassumption that you had made on the name, but even they could be wrong. The advent of technology has allowed a cross-pollination of opinion to be easily presented to somebody who has access to a PC or a tablet or a mobile phone. So if you can use the tools which we've shown you, and none of them are difficult, you can pretty much go plant by plant through your collection, correcting the naming, and have a fantastic sense of accomplishment that till date, until that present time, your plants are likely to be labelled as correctly as possible in the ongoing state of affairs. So the other little featurette that we're going to include in this particular video is simply a list of acceptable, accepted Gymnocolisium names botanically. And yes, there will still be variances. There will still be this botanist, and there will still be this botanist, and these two botanists will say, that is not a species, that is a subspecies. And that person will say, that's not even a subspecies, that's a variety. And that person will say, that is not even a variety, that's merely a former. And that person will say, that's not even a former. That's just two different plants growing into different ecological situations, producing a different looking plant. There are still humans involved in this equation, and there are still opinions. But, by and large, the list of names which we have distilled from looking at the five or six websites which we most respect as presenting botanical information most accurately will be given to you. So if your name is not on that list, you're not coming in. If your name is not on the list of accepted Gymnocolisium species, the chances are it's wrong or it has been reclassified to be more generous. So please, in this short summation or conclusion to the series, do use the tools that we've shown you. They are incredibly valuable. We're using them on an ongoing basis in the greenhouse. Every plant that arrives, we're looking at, we're checking the name. Even if we ourselves are 100% convinced that that is the plant name, we're checking it, and if necessary, with the weight of evidence in one particular point of view, then that point of view will hold sway. We will rename the plant at that point. But it is a work in progress. So, the merits of the genus have been explained, the taxonomy of the genus has been uh, explained, the very fragile nature of the species concept has been touched on, very, very plastic at present. What is a species? What isn't a species? Does that plant have significant enough genetic identity to um, have its own name? 
or should it be inextricably linked with another plant which is similar enough genetically for them to share a name together. And that is a big uh, factor in gymnocolysium classification. We've also looked at a growing collection and hopefully you've been able to pick on, on the narrative thread that has gone through from the arrival, almost, from the postman of a large consignment of plants all the way through to those plants being um, displayed on the show bench in the main Kirkstone greenhouse and also the problems of, ta of uh, accurate naming and accurate identification of a plant no matter how beautiful it can still be wrongly named and we've managed, I think, I hope to encapsulate a whole range of those challenges to collecting plants into this one plant which is coming up Okay, so having obtained a plant and we're going to use our specimen plant of Gymnocolysium marchese var argentinense as an example, we're going to start using some of this software we've discovered and some of these fabulous internet sites to check the identity. So we'll do the obvious. We start off by doing a search for Gymnocolysium marchesii and we've even got Gymnocolysium marchesii var argentinense. So, there's some uh, reasonably convincing looking images. So we go straight on to images and we pick one of those images which is from the Encyclopedia from Living Forms which we investigated very thoroughly on the previous video where we looked at internet based resources and that plant looks pretty similar to Gymnocolysium marchesii. So this is Gymnocolysium flancii which we have a small plant of in the collection which looks quite a bit different from the mature one but we do notice that when we look in synonyms that one of the synonyms that's identified is Gymnocolysium flancii sub, uh, subspecies argentinense or indeed Gymnocolysium marchesii subspecies argentinense. So the plot thickens. So that's a pretty uh, convincing picture and we're taking note of the roughly square to hexagonal tubercles, some of which are shorter square and some of which are more elongated. So they're quite tall. The other features we're noticing here are that the lower level spines are very pale bone grey with very little or no central spination whereas the younger spines towards the apex of the plant are rich reddy brown moving towards black and there are some strong central spines appearing. So if we go back into our Gymnocolysium folders that we used in constructing this actual um, series we do remember that somewhere we had a very large store of photographic material that we used in the uh, particular expose that showed the unpotting and the inculcation into the collection of the plant that we did know and quite happily bought as Gymnocolysium marchesii variety argentinense. So having identified in the Gymnocolysium 6 folder quite a few photos do we have one which is more or less at the same angle so we can compare the, the morphology of the tubercles and the spines exactly so let's just see what we can do well that looks pretty similar allowing for the fact that plants do vary and the spines on our specimen do look a little bit thinner than the spines on the photograph on the Encyclopedia of Living Forms webcast. When we move to the angle which most closely replicates that one, we can see that the tubercles have that very particular long hexagonal shape. So although the larger plant may not look exactly the same, 
when we do come down to one of the smaller plants and we change the angle we can find that there is a huge amount of correspondence there are the darker spines at the top there are the lighter uh, spines around the bottom you can see the lo lower level spines are the same bone grey colour and you can also see that the newer growth has a much darker richer reddy brown shading to black. So that looks pretty convincing at this stage. Gymnocalicium marquesii, variety argentinense, may indeed be conspecific with Gymnocalicium flancii. But is there any way we can back this up? Because just using one uh, source of evidence is always prone to be problematical. So the other site that we really fell in love with was the Cacti in Habitat site. Is there anything on Gymnocolisseum in the Cacti in Habitat site? Where could we find that? Well there's nothing under Marchesii, so let's look under the suggested name which is Flancii. And it just so happens that as we scroll through the pictures we can see the Cactus in Habitat site we can see Gymnocolisseum flancii growing in habitat and one of the pseudonyms listed at the side is Gymnocolisseum marquesii. Isn't that wonderful? So we have two sources of information which back up the fact that these plants are in fact conspecific. So, Looking at the habitat pictures and allowing for the natural variance of individual plants in populations and between areas, we can see those uh, roughly hexagonal to uh, long tubercles. That's a very good match. We can see the lower level spines are that ashy grey and the newer spines coming out have those darker tips. We can see the, the lack of distinct ribs. We can see that the individual tubercles are very prominent. And if we look at another area and another collection of photographs, we find the plants are even more similar. Because in this population, the newer spines are that much richer, darker colour. And as they age, they fade that ash grey and bone grey colour. So at this point we can reflect on our own plant and we can look at the gorgeous pictures on the Cactus in Habitat website of the uh, plant that we now know is Gymnocolisseum flancii and we see that there is so much correspondence that we are 99% convinced that this plant is the plant that we obtained under a different name. And this process, especially as we've already discussed, there are hundreds, if not verging on a thousand different, different gymnocolisium names in circulation, is exactly the process that we would go through with any gymnocolisium name that we weren't 100% convinced by. Okay, if it's a, a plant which is very distinct and couldn't be uh, confused with anything else like Gymnocolisium uh, mihanovicii or Friedrichii or Isozogna, any of those very, very, very distinct plants, then we wouldn't need to check. Otherwise, we always would. And there we are. And that's pretty much the Gymnocolisium presentation for now. Six videos altogether an introductory video, a four video narrative thread going through from cultivated specimens through to wild specimens, um, cacti in habitat, to compare and contrast the difference between those uh, growing conditions and how that has an effect on how the plants actually look as they grow. Some beautiful plant, some beautiful plant um, pictography from the cactus in habitat state from um, Bolivia and particularly from Argentina, please do check them out. It's a fantastic site, so full of information. It's just a joy and a treasure 
to use. It really, really is. Cactus in Habitat. And then at the Fire Nation, in the last video, we looked at some online resources to enable you to deepen your understanding of the Gymnocolisium collecting hobby. And by extension, you can use the same tools, the same methodologies, the same research techniques into any plant genus, particularly any cactus genus or succulent genus. And finally, we have those few bits and pieces which we haven't been able to put anywhere else, which are in this video now. So that will conclude the Gymnocolisium presentation for this year. We will continue to add to the collection and as much as possible time allowing I will record each and every action that directly pertains to the Gymnocolisium collection here at Kirkstone. And later on we will be uh, revisiting the Gymnocolisium series with an update or even a series of updates so you can see exactly where it is that we've got to with our favourite, joint favourite, ah, uh, joint favourite, joint favourite South American cactus genus. After this series, and I won't dwell on this very much, we will be looking at a non-cactus series, a very large and very expansive overview of the aloe family, including, but not limited to, what has happened in reclassification to aloes, to hawarthias, to gasterias, and others within that overarching aloe group concept. But for gym gymnocolisiums, there's still some more good stuff to come. Please keep watching, please comment. We, we cannot express to you how important it is for you to give us feedback. If we have veered too much towards the botanical, the classification, the taxonomy of Gymnocolisium and the whole idea of genus concept within South American botany, then tell us. We will do less if you think it's too much. If you think that that was a good feature and it's something which isn't being offered, which it isn't really, on other YouTube channels, then tell us. And then we'll do slightly more perhaps until we reach that equitable state of a perfect balance and equilibrium being maintained. The most important thing for us is that the videos are exciting, well, reasonably exciting, I'm not the most exciting person in the world, but reasonably exciting, but that the plants hold centre stage and the true beauty and natural diversity of God's creation is presented to you in a way which we find as informative on one hand and as eye-catching on the other hand as is possible. There's always a balance to be kept but it is about the plants, it's not about me, it's not about the Kirkstone channel, it's about the plants. And one last thing before I go, I did on the last video say that we had the Kirkstone Botanica um, page on Facebook and also the people who like Kirkstone Botanica page on Facebook to which you are more than invited, you are enjoined to contribute, to send pictures, to ask questions, to join in controversial discussions, have arguments, but most important of all, send pictures of your own cultivated plants to us, or indeed habitat plants to us, so that we can publish them on the site and we build up a real community of Gymnocolisium lovers and growers. Which brings me to my final point. We now have a dedicated Gymnocolisium page. So Planet Gymnocolisium is a page on Kirkstone, just, just look the it on Facebook, just look for Planet Gymnocolisium, I'll put the um, address on uh, while I'm speaking, as it were, but, but afterwards. Please check there for more pictures of Gymnocolisium and plants that people have sent in from the, the viewing audience out there in the blogosphere. Okay. Thanks for watching, it really does mean a lot to us that more and more people are subscribing, more and more people are watching. The number of likes that we got on the Gymnocolisium series and the number of views that we're getting on the Gymnocolisium series has been awe-inspiring. 
Never in a million years did we think that we would get this much support. But we are, and um, we're trying to serve the public, the viewing public, the best we can. So, thanks for watching. I've got work to do, as usual, and I'll be back with you very, very soon with what we're doing with this mystery plant. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Okay, so we did promise to provide a list of um, acceptable Gymno Coliseum names and if we uh, very quickly go through some of the resources that we've already used um, on at least two videos and also introduce you to one which hasn't been used so far and how it works, we may find it instrumental in gaining an enhanced understanding of the, uh, the, the Gymno Coliseum species issue. So you know, the, uh, the site on uh, Wikipedia is relatively straightforward. It says Gymno Coliseum, commonly called Gin Cactus, is a genus of about 70 South American species of cactus. So just to uh, reappraise you, in the uh, South American area we have Brazil and we have uh, Argentina, Paraguay, Bolivia and Uruguay. So a large area uh, in the sort of centralist um, zone of South America, not going to the very north of the continent and not going to the very south down towards Tierra del Fuego. But central and northern Argentina, up towards northern Brazil and across the higher altitude countries in central South America. Well, that's where the, the genus is uh, sited. And there is a list of those about 70 species, some of which uh, are accompanied by pictures and some of which are not. But generally, a useful place to start our understanding of the uh, species list is on Wikipedia. So that's not a bad place to start. Um, and then one of the other places that we've looked at was the Encyclopedia of um, Living Forms and also the Cactus in Habitat site. And on the Cactus in Habitat site, in particular, there was that very, very, very useful list of uh, South American genera, not all of which are related to Gymnocolisium, but many of which are. But Gymnocolisium itself, you can see it's already chosen because it's somewhere where I, where I go a lot, has that species list coming down the side here. So if we were to go to, for example, Let's go somewhere that we haven't looked at, uh, Pediophyllum. Okay, then we have that a picture of Pediophyllum. And most usefully in this discussion about species is that we also have synonyms. And we're going to come to that idea of synonyms very, very soon. But many, many habitat pictures of a Pediophyllum there. And again, I can't uh, stress um, highly enough how useful this www.cactusinhabitat.org site is. It is totally and absolutely brilliant. What is useful in here as well is that there is a um, very, very useful section, incredibly useful section, and I do urge and encourage you to read it, is it goes into much more detail on some of the subjects I've talked about one of which was the concept of species. And it talks about how the concept of species has changed very much since the time of Linnaeus and the original classification of plants and then picked up by Darwin going all the way through towards um, people like Ernest Mayer who was an ornithologist working in the 1940s and then down to people who were much more um, salient to our discussion people like Hunt who are actually talking about the plants that we're interested in. So Hunt writing in 2006 is talking about what a species is and how our concept of a species has changed and become more plastic. So I have touched on this but it goes into much more detail here. So please do read. It talks about a, a general understanding of species and genus 
concept in the cactus family and there are so many links it is I don't want to over egg the pudding or put too many cherries on the cake it is well worth half an hour of your time to read this it talks about varieties and species and all of the ideas that I touched on in video one about how one botanist can see a variety another botanist can see a subspecies but it specifically refers to cactus species and genus names with botanists who have expressed a certain opinion and it sort of puts into a nutshell the kinds of ideas that I've, I've tried to broach and bring into a general appreciation of the Gymnocolisseum genus. So please do check that. But as far as an accepted name list concerns, I think one of the places which is really worth going is the one we haven't touched on so far and it's www.theplantlist.org so you don't need that of course you just need to google plant list all one word and one of the things that you'll get from the plant list is an alphabetical list of gymnocolisseum species okay so there's no value in me copying this out there it is and there is the accepted list of species going from albo areolatum all the way down to plants we've seen in the collection like Baldianum, Brucii, Chiquitanum, Denudatum, Erinaceum. All of these plants are at Kirkstone and you can see as far as our uh, interests are concerned that in this column we can see there is an accepted. So this means that the vast majority of taxonomic sources, the vast majority of serious botanists working in the field would accept that Gymnocolisseum albo areatum is an accepted name. So it's got two stars because there may be some people who don't agree but it's an accepted name. And if we go all the way down the list we get a continued um, list which is sort of behind the scenes and it also shows you that there are a bigger list of names which are not accepted. But for our purposes, what is most useful is this section here. It says the plant list, so the site that we were on, includes 189 scientific plant names. So these are names which are currently in circulation. And even more important is this section here. It said of the 74 are accepted species names. So you can explore the, the plant list site yourself. It has the full list of names on there, whether they are um, accepted or not accepted. But what is important for us is that this list here, starting with Albo areolatum here, and finishing with Gymnocolisseum vateri here, is the accepted list of 74 names. So this is your list to work from. Now if you go to any one individual plant, uh, let's go to Ritterianum, because we have looked at that plant. In Ritterianum it says this is an accepted name and it also says where this name was originally recorded, which was in the botanical journal Tropicos, and this was in 1972 in Cacteen und Ander Succulenten uh, by, of course, discovered by Friedrich Ritter. And uh, more information there, various pull-down menus. But again, I want to keep this brief. The important thing is this list here, starting with Alvuario Latum, moving all the way through down towards... Vateri is the list. This is the list as of May 2019. So if your plant isn't on this list, if you have a plant and you can't reduce it to conspecific status with any one of these, then you may need to um, go onto Google and see if it comes up with a synonym which is on this list. And if it is, this is the list that you should use. 74 
Gymno Coliseum names. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Thank you very, very much indeed. Thank you. Once again, thanks for watching.